Hi, Phoebe here from Health and High Performance. Today we're talking about whether you can exercise with pain. So whether you've got a recent injury or you're managing an old one, if you wanna keep training but you're unsure if the pain you're experiencing is okay. Firstly, it's important to remember that pain does not always correlate with tissue damage and hurt does not equal harm. A good example of this is when you have a hot shower after being sunburnt. It can really sting, but doesn't necessarily mean you're doing more damage to your skin. It's just that the skin is more sensitive. So this same concept can be applied when we experience pain during training. The great news is that whether you're returning from a recent injury or managing more ongoing and persistent pain, training with pain can even be acceptable and a good thing. A 2017 systematic review demonstrated that individuals suffering chronic pain, so this is pain present for more than three months, who performed exercises with some level of pain present, reported lower levels of pain in the short term over individuals who performed completely pain-free exercises. Additionally, research demonstrates that movement and exercise is the best treatment strategy in managing hip and knee osteoarthritis, and that mild pain during this exercise is acceptable. So depending on the type of injury, whether it's a muscle strain, tendinopathy or low back pain, a similar approach can be applied to acute or new injuries. So a recent study conducted on hamstring strains investigated if performing rehab exercises in the presence of pain resulted in faster return to playtimes compared to those who completed their rehab completely pain-free. Although it found a similar return to playtime, it did find that those who performed rehab with some level of pain had greater hamstring strength when they returned. So tendinopathy, for example, Achilles tendinopathy or plantar fasciopathy is another common condition that requires progressive loading and research demonstrates that painful rehabilitation has no detrimental effects on recovery. And those who perform rehab with some pain report greater symptomatic improvements compared to those who keep their rehab completely pain free. So how do you know what's an acceptable level of pain and when you may need to ease off? So we like to use the scale below and giving the pain a score out of 10 with 10 being the worst pain ever for you and zero being no pain at all. So if you're experiencing zero to three pain, then you may be okay to increase the loads. Pain between three to five is okay, but maybe keep the load the same. And experiencing pain between five to 10 is a sign that you may need to modify what you're doing. It's important that your pain symptoms quickly settle back down to baseline levels within about 24 hours. So other factors such as training frequency and duration may need to be modified if baseline pain levels are not being achieved fast enough. Also remember that the human body is resilient and adaptable. Loading joints and muscles when injured is critical in being able to return to full function and performance. So if you train and pain is present, think of the pain as a stimulus for adaptation. So you're making your body stronger and giving it the best opportunity to recover. So while pain should not be the only criteria in judging how well your recovery is going, it can be a useful guide in progressing your rehabilitation program. Whilst the above information acts as a good guide, it is also important to ensure that you get a diagnosis from your health professional to ensure that your pain is something that can be exercised through safely. So in summary, remember pain does not correlate with tissue damage. Your body is strong and resilient. Pain you rate is less than four out of 10 is acceptable to continue to train through. If during your activity you rate your pain more than five out of 10, it's time to modify. So by decreasing the weight or changing position, etc. If in doubt, don't hesitate to reach out to us for further information at www.healthhv.com.au.